What is going on, Bards? And welcome. We are here on the P99 Green server during the Velius expansion. Um, and we are here in City of Mist, and we're going to do some AE kiting. So this will be a guide on that. Um, up front, this guide is meant to be overly detailed. So if you want to get right to the meat of it and you know what's going on, for the most part, feel free to simply skip ahead. We'll have timestamps down below in the description. Uh, quickly, up front as well, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the famous Melatonin. Um, who has been doing some great bard solo content, charm karting, and all kinds of stuff that he's been doing. So check out his page as well. Um, and also to Minart. He has a, a really good video, which I'm not exactly sure if it's even on YouTube or not. But they both both videos um, from both awesome bards uh, show some uh, the whole kites as well. Um, and I'm kind of merging some. I stole some tips and tricks from both. Shamelessly took them. And uh, we'll point those out as we go. Um, so shout out to those guys. Awesome stuff. Uh, what we're going to do here is cover the areas, the uh, zone itself, what we're pulling, the mobs. Uh, we'll get into maybe some stats, um, items definitely, and the song lineups, and anything else I could really think of along the way. So uh, in this guide, I'm going to show both styles of kiting. We're going to be able to strafe kite in this zone, actually, and, we're all, and we will do the normal method or my normal method of just uh, normal tight circles and keeping it in the courtyard over here, uh, which would be pretty simple. Um, and yeah, so uh, this could be a tricky, especially dangerous area, right? We're gonna do a lot of body aggroing to get a lot of these mobs. Um, you know, RNG gods hopefully will be in your favor and you don't get crushed too much by, by them. So I'll kind of get into um, what to do if you are just taking too much damage and whatnot. Um, I will be doing the kites on Lethen here, my level 60 bard, uh, just as to show you the different types of techniques and what you can do. Of course, we'll use all four songs and all that kind of stuff. And then after, I will do it on my other bard, McTwist. He is level 49. And for more practicality, he will not have all the items that I have. I have, you know, raid gear and all that kind of stuff. So we'll definitely show all of this. Uh, with a with a l much lower gear bard, he's actually missing some equipment, but whatever. Uh, we're gonna get it done, and so and we'll kind of show what we get at the end. I know on my guy, I've done this eh, just a few times, um, so I'm not like the master of this zone, but uh, I'm averaging about eight percent per pull at level sixty, so that's still pretty darn good. That's almost an entire bubble every pull, every twenty two minutes. So that is the repop time of the zone. Uh, another consideration is to bind yourself closely if you can't get a port. I mentioned that we were in the Veldis expansion for a reason, and that is because at this stage of the game, um, on, the, on the green server, you don't have to run the Karnas Castle to get a teleport from a druid or wizard from Karnas Castle. You can get it from anywhere. So if you have a porter who can help you out, cool. Bind anywhere you want. Um, but otherwise, I guess Karnas Castle, or not Karnas Castle, but Frona V would be the closest you know city to run from, um, which is still a long ways away, right? Still time consuming, people will move in, groups will move in. It's hard to get, it's kind of hard now to get the camp where everything is clear all around um, and so that you don't train people and you know the, the, the timing is pretty minimal so that yeah, you're not interfering with other group play because that is a huge consideration when doing AE kites here in a, in a dungeon zone uh, like this. So let's go through some items real quick. Um, first and foremost, you're going to want levitate, right? I got Pegasus Feather Cloak. I also happen to have somewhere in here uh, my Singing Steel Boots. Oh, the heck are they? Here they are. And uh, levitate is going to be uh, pretty important as we're going to run along all these ramparts, all these little, um, you know, the, the top rails here. Uh, and we're going to be running up onto these bridges. Uh, and running up and over all the way through flying around we're gonna have to levitate over to get you know the last bit of the kite uh, from the top of this bridge so these are some items that you can use um, to achieve that so again also singing steel boots this is a shorter duration levitate now this doesn't happen until a little bit later in the kunark expansion or maybe even velios um, kind of forget but originally singing steel boots start with you know like summon food effect uh, it is not levitate. So, Kunark comes out. 
um, you will not be able to use this right away. So later on, get the Singing Steel Boots. There may be like 500 or so Platinum, you know, East Commons. Um, so pretty cheap, uh, very cheap alternative to the Pegasus Feather Cloak. Pegasus Feather Cloak is really nice. It does last longer. Uh, both are free clickies. So easy day. Definitely want Levitate. Uh, other um, alternatives could be like a potion of anti-weight. Um, or levitate rings, or just having someone that can cast levitate on you, at least for the pull. You will at least want levitate for the pull initially. Um, you can use your levitate song, because I realize that you know if you're lower than you know 51 to use your cello song of travel, um, you won't have that form of levitate. And plus, you don't want to use the song anyways, because if you get hit, you're going to lose cellos, right? And then you have to reapply it, but you're going to get hit uh, a little bit too often to make that viable. So to use your regular Levitate song, it requires a flute or a wind instrument. And uh, that's not really practical, especially if you don't have uh, Journeyman Boots or Spear of the Wolf or Spear of the Wolf Pots, you know, or just an item that can cast it. Um, so um, those would be considered as well. So that's just kind of impractical to use that and try to twist and swap out because you definitely want cellos with a drum to get you that speed, to get around aggro everything and just try not to get hit so very important there um, uh, I do have my own on left in here I do have the ability to cast Spear of the Wolf on myself so um, you know I got I got it made easy there but regardless Journeyman Boots perfectly fine um, or nothing right on my other Bard McTwist I, I don't have any of it so I'm going to do it all with only cellos and the Singing Steel Boots because that's all he's going to have so definitely want those. Um, other than that, uh, basic, you know, drum, lute, horn, uh, wind instrument. Um, I will have only the basics on McTwist as well. So I'm showing you just with a normal lute, they can all be done, normal, normal drum, um, and all of that. So uh, stats, stats aren't really too big of an issue here. It's gonna be hit points, right? Uh, magic resist kind of don't need so there's only one type of mob that actually casts and can root you up here and that's the human skeleton and right now i think he's up over in the back over here uh, so i'm going to avoid that and i'll show you on the map here in a second uh where he is but all the rest of these is phantoms uh wraiths goos yeah skeletons right they don't none of them cast and when you pull these kites uh none of them uh will be casting on you Hopefully, if you get that human skeleton and you recognize it early, I would just zone it out, note where he is, and uh, try to avoid that. Right? If you get rooted, bad day. Right? So that'll be that. Uh, song lineup, real quick. Um, for this, of course, using solos. Um, let me unlock this here, and just going through. This is you know typically what I might use. Um, your heel heel song. So it doesn't have to be cantata. It could be your heel. Um, I'm using all four AE dots, uh, so Denon's chords, uh, disruptive discord, and dissonance. Um, this I will prioritize the loot. I will also do that at level 48 because this is um, your chord of cessation is your next highest one at level 48. So uh, if you are this level, then I would prior prioritize stringed instruments uh, to get the most uh, dot damage from. Cessation and your chords of dissonance, and I'll kind of uh, explain that. I'll just hit upon that again on my other bard. But anyways, we're using all four dots. Um, I do have charm. Uh, I don't use it as much, but one thing you can do is just charm like a wraith over here, send them in over here, and then you can start the kite. By the time, uh, by the time you're running around, charm might break, and it'll just help to aggro extra mobs because you should be around, coming down, and 18 seconds later, it might be broken and you're good to go. So that's the only reason. Uh, Solo Song of Travel, if you have it, that's just to help you run around and get up here. We'll explain how to get up here, what's the fastest way. There are two ways, but one is kind of the, the main way for us as bards. Uh, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, and then the last course, Cellos Accelerando. I'd always have that up, no matter what. Um, Another alternative to the charm is just have, you can just have a dot or any direct damage. doesn't really matter uh, to help start tagging. Do you need that? Nope, not at all. Because as soon as you start going, we're not stopping. You're not going to, you're not, well, I'm not stopping to cast anything. 
Um, it is, you're running and we are booking. So uh, with that, we'll go through the uh, zone layout real quick. So where are we going? What are we doing? If you've never been here before, of course, I got to do a map. And here, uh, if you're at the entrance, so we're going to be starting here and we'll run down. And so actually to kind of follow this, I'm just going to lay it out first where we're going. And then we will show it here in the video and then uh, some of the camps real quick so that you can be mindful of where people are when you do a camp check. So from here, the main goal is to get back here initially. So we're going to run through, you know, either side, left or right, doesn't really matter. Uh, just going around, coming in. We're going to note a golem that could uh, potentially spawn right here. But regardless, we're going to run right around to the right side and over here. Um, here, we're going to use a levitate trick to get up onto this hut right here. And then we'll fly over on top of the temple where I am now. So that's going to be the main uh, main thing to do. Um, you can also just run around initially. Uh, we have different camps here. So I don't know the exact names of some of them, but we have what's called the stables over here. Uh, these guys are pulling all the stuff that's in here and usually some of this stuff all out here or whatever, whatever is available. Um, they'll be pulling most of this. So most, so most of the time during the day, a lot of this is already cleared because their groups are just annihilating mobs. Uh, the other one is the is what is called the temple, and that's this area here. This is the temple. Uh, some groups will fight outside here. Some guys will be soloing inside. Not a big deal. Over here, there is another way to levitate up. Um, if you don't have cellos, uh, which we'll show, I'll just I'll just show it. Uh, I'll just point it out, but um, I won't do it. But uh, and thanks to shout out to Ilnik for that. He also plays clips, um, but um, he showed me that a long time ago, so that's really cool. And I still utilize that sometimes on my other characters. So you do have the other courtyard area on this side. Um, the groups will be here pulling from inside the temple, uh, the huts and whatnot, uh, whatever whatever is available, all down here if no one's you know in the back. And uh, so that so this group, if you're gonna do the strafe kiting, because we can strafe around the temple and uh, and kite that way, but if there's a group here, you know, probably probably don't probably don't do that. It's kind of kind of rude, <laughs> unless you have made you know arrangements for that or you know some some agreement, whatever. But uh, cool. So uh, from this area right here, you can go either right or left. Uh, they both lead to the same area, which is what they call the moat. So I believe it's called the moat, or maybe this is the moat. I don't really know. But uh, this is the back area. I, I suggest once you levitate up, just run over here and you can look down and see who's there, right? If they haven't said anything. So there's mobs, you know, oh, not not there, but there's mobs here, you know, along the way inside these little like gazebos that I'll point out. And uh, all the way in, this room is full of mobs. Uh, to get to the second level where we want to actually pull from, there is a lift inside that you have to get on. This is not ideal. We don't want to go in there. We're going to get crushed if you do that uh, because it takes time to get the lift up and down, whatever. And they're probably going to kick your butt by the time you... You're not going to be able to escape, I don't think, fast enough with the mobs that are in there. So we'll get into some of those a little bit later. So that is the main layout. Let's just check it out real quick so that you get the reference in a, in a nice warm and fuzzy about the area of my UI thing there. There we go. So we'll just get on cellos here. Remember the con everything. Always consider everything uh, because things can see in viz. So right now I'm just going to run back to the entrance here just to kind of start. So from the entrance, again, sometimes these mobs will see in viz. So when you're walking out here, uh, consider just click hide behind first. I've just ran out here and just stood in like, like a ding dong. Uh, they just start aggroing me, and then there might be people, you know, sitting back here meditating and whatnot. Don't want to train them, but whatever. So you'll come out uh, through these gates. You know, I definitely want to con all these before. I just know that they are uh, that they don't see in viz, but sometimes they do. So be careful. If you go left over here, you're going to get to the, what is known as a stable group. They will usually be right here. 
you know, in this side, and they're just pulling all these mobs, and they can pull all of these golems as well. Uh, so that is where the stables is. Uh, if you come back through and go to the right, uh, this is the temple. And sometimes the groups will be right over here or whatnot because there's another golem that spawns there. But wherever, wherever they are, um, you know, you just want to be mindful. None of these mobs should be pathing over in these areas. So these are disconnected a little bit and it's only, you know, blocked off by these walls, but they should not be aggroing through for any reason. So one thing you can do is you can run through this door here. You're going to go straight and go up and you can lull your way up onto the, where this flag is. And uh, what you can do is levitate off the top of here <clears throat> and uh, levitate up on, on top of this. And you're going to see where these are. You should consider first. Okay. Um, they are in the wall. So you want to stand on top of these and uh, specifically this one you can stand on top of that and drop take off your levitate and then you can jump up onto the ledge um, so that is one way to get up there but regardless um, we're not going to do that so the next right here is a fearless bard here is a patase burning it up melting mobs pretty cool and this is exactly where we're going to be when we do our kite so exactly what uh, she's doing we're gonna do um, and show the other method one thing to note too is this mob right here so as we come in this vapor golem is the only one that spawns in the courtyard area he's the only mob so if you do strafe kiting around I'm gonna show it in more detail um, I'll probably most likely just aggro him as I'm kiting but uh you know people usually pull him if he pops while you're kiting he has the potential to stun you so you got to be careful with that, that's one of the, the big considerations there um, <clears throat> is that mob. So pretty cool. She's tearing it up. Um, so we're going to run down. I'm going to run down to the back real quick. This is the kind of the last area, the last camp for groups. Normally there would be mobs all along here. I hear some here. But uh, this is the back portion of the zone. And people will be camped out you know, on the sides, typically pulling from inside or and, and along all the moat here. So this is the other area. This is the most important one of all of them um, because you don't want to train. As we pull mobs from the top, from all these areas, they are going to path all the way around inside. Uh, these are actually like hallways inside the wall here. And you, can, and you can run all the way through, but they will all path and come down and out of here. And we're going to use that to our advantage to collect more of these mobs without ever needing to be over here. But we'll get into that a little bit later. But that is why if this is camped, this is a definite no-no uh, to be pulling through. Um, unless you, you know, have coordinated coordinated it before. Uh, to where the camp is clear and you, you know, you tell them, hey, we're pulling now. Here I go. Here come the mobs. Cool. Uh, otherwise, um, don't pull through the groups, please. <laughs> Um, so cool. So the goal is, again, I said uh, we're going to get to a certain point. Those are all the, the camps. Um, we're going to get to this spike right here. And we're going to use this to levitate up onto this hut. And then, again, up onto top of the temple. So these are two huts here. I call them hut one and then hut two. That's just what I label them as. Not a big call them whatever you want. But, uh, and we'll get into how to get up on top and get levitating. So we'll do that here and get to that kiting. Alrighty, so for the levitate trick here, we're gonna look for the topmost point, this little spike right here, and we want it to be the closest one to the HUD. Does it need to be that one? Not really, but we're already pretty close in distance. But anyways, uh, what we're gonna do is just gonna run on top of there to get the most height that we can, and then we're gonna use uh, some mechanics here to get on uh, and float over to this hut or this little house so what we're going to do all we're going to do is you see me bobbing up and down uh, i am in the window mode so that's going to be important here you want to be able to click on and off your screen and what we're going to achieve is we're going to be able to move up very slowly uh vertically here so what we're doing is we are bobbing up and down we're going to look for the bottom part of the bob and the top part uh, when you hit the bottom of the levitate bounce here we're going to click off the screen and you see my character rise up a little bit 
And in which case at the at the peak at the top of the of that bob, we're gonna click back onto the onto the main screen and it will kind of lock in a new height. So let's do that right now. So at the bottom, clicking off the screen, top, clicking back on. And you can see that I've risen you know, a, a pretty good height there. Uh, so we'll do it again. So at the bottom here, at the top, clicking on. And we'll do that repeatedly until we kind of get just enough height. Ooh, there goes a nice kite. <laughs> there you go. Um, to get enough height, just to simply get over here and onto the hut. So that's the first part. The next part we're going to do is um, get to the top of the temple here. One thing that I kind of do sometimes, not all the time, but if you're unable to get over here the first time, which it could happen to me, but uh, we're aiming for this spot right here, this little ledge, that's going to be the closest, the shortest distance. For this, we do want cellos on with a drum to give us the speed, because as soon as we move, we're going to start falling pretty quickly. So Again, let's do the levitate trick at the bottom and up. And this time we're going to max out. So there is a height cap at which you can do this. And, and, it, and it will be very apparent once we get there. But you do want to be as high up as you can get. So again, clicking at the top. And you can see I kind of stalled out. Um, here, I'll do it again. So the bottom and I'm kind of stuck I'm just kind of moving there so now hold your breath run across and hit that little ledge and now you are on top of the temple and this will be uh, where we start our kite and get everything else that we need set up and ready alrighty so we are back up here um, and I'm gonna explain just a few more tidbits so uh, typically we pull the mobs from the top here and pull all that stuff and it aggroes everything from the back and it will come down and through as we'll show here in a bit. Um, but it's also if you um, as we get as you are lower level, it's going to be harder, right? Survivability is a big issue with getting hit. These are the higher higher level mobs with the highest kind of being up here and things being pulled. Um, and that's only as you are pulling. So again, you can still pull everything on the ground if it's open into your kite. You don't have to specifically pull only these mobs. So if you're trying to get that, you know, to, to level up, uh, starting at like, you know, 40 or so, you know, even 38, um, you can still just kite the regular mobs that are down on down below. You don't have to pull all these mobs. Um, and one thing to note is uh, you can always pull them in sections too, right? You can just tag one of these mobs and as long as they're on the ramparts, which I'll explain here in a moment, they all path the same way and will aggro through most of the mobs uh, along the way to get down to you. So that's another easy advantage. We're only running around the top here just to get those extra mobs because the way they path, um, they will all go out the same way. So kind of explain this a little bit further. I have my uh, map here that I uh, kind of copied from the uh, wiki one. Um, but this, these are all the ramparts and all the causeways here, or tunnels, whatever, um, depicting uh, where, where we're going to go on this second floor. So again, we are just here standing there. And uh, typically a normal path would be we're running through, there's, there's a few doors that we have to get through um, to get out and all of that. So we're going to run through all these doors. And uh, normally the path up here from what I've seen and what makes sense the most to get the most mobs is we just kind of levitate right off and start running in, aggroing all the mobs within just through body aggro and through social, social aggro. And the uh, goal will ultimately be for doing this to get here. And this is where the uh, crystalline bridge is or the, or the goo bridge, uh, which is right over here. So this... Uh, bridge is what we're going to come out in to get up and to tag everything along the top. So the entrance to this is on the side right here, not on the hut. Uh, another thing to note is that if you come over here, when you uh, enter the enter this, you're going to enter right here, and there is a gap right here. So you got to be careful not to take too sharp of a turn coming out this way. Um, you want to just make sure that you, or ensure that you hit the bridge. <laughs> so if you run off it, uh, speed ready to run to the hut. 
Um, don't want to get you don't want to drop down below the hut because oh well, you can, but we want to use the mechanics of the hut to gather mobs and whatnot, which makes it a lot simpler uh, to do. So just keep that in mind. Um, cool. So running back here, back to the map. Um, the mobs ultimately will all path uh, from top, from the top, from you know these these bridges and floating you know little huts up here. Uh, all these mobs will path the same way. If you run out this way, the mobs are going to path uh, through these walls all the way back and come out of this back temple part here. Right, They're going to come out, they're going to come down all the way and, and you know slalom all the way through to get to where we are. Um, so what that looks like here is all the mobs will path oh, run through and you can even run through and there's mobs all throughout here this is a whole tunnel system here We're, we are not going to run through here but because because the mobs will do it for us we don't need to do that uh, but they will come out they will take the lift down <laughs> and and just run out and to uh, get to us on either side and we're going to manipulate where we are we're going to manipulate using both huts uh you know calling it hut one hut two whatever you want to call them doesn't matter uh uh, thanks to Minard's video, uh, as soon as we see mobs coming, we're going to shift to the other hut so that they aggro everything along the way and trying to get the most bang for the buck. So that would be the cool, a cool way to do it, which we'll show <clears throat> in a bit. So again, at lower levels, if you're getting hit too much, you don't have to kite. You don't have to commit to pulling every single mob. You can kite just the top here and run off. And they will still run through and aggro all those additional mobs. Um, you don't have to risk, you know, doing that. Also, if you feel like you're ever in trouble, realize that the zone out is right down here, right? You can run straight out, or if you're kiting, right, and you get low, too low for comfort, just drop down and, and beeline for the exit. Um, and what that looks like kind of would be out here. So you can simply run straight out at, at, at any time. Uh, you can use this to, to your advantage to gain some extra height if you need it. Uh, and just run down to the exits down there. So that would be a way to do it. So again, exit on either side <clears throat> is right down there. So cool. Um, trying to think of anything else here. Um, that'll be it as far as pulling. So now, hopefully we can levitate back over. Just getting some height here, using the areas to get over without getting aggro. Cool. So now we're going to talk about going up the bridge and over, right? So this is also important. I also you guessed it, have a map. So <laughs> I always have a map. So the goal will be to run up. Let's uh, get some color here. Sorry. All right, so run up and over. Uh, this floating hut has a ledge. So we're just gonna simply run on the ledge and get down here to this area. This hut does not have a ledge. So we don't wanna run through, but we can levitate over. To do that, we need to pick out some visual references here. Uh, as we come down, uh, we need to gain height. We need to gain height to be able to levitate over. So uh, to do that, we're hitting these little like pillars here that, that stick up. So this one and this one right along the wall will get you that height necessary. And of course you need cellos. So if you're getting stunned, which has happened to me, um, I'm not able to get uh, cellos back up fast enough without just getting hit and crushed by mobs uh, to make it across. So definitely uh, you want to strafe through here if you can. Strafe as much as you can just to avoid extra hits and damage. Uh, focus on at least hitting that even for the moment. Even if you do get stunned and cellos is still on, you can still make it over. Because the uh, last goal will be to just simply you can levitate over to the end or you could just run around. And making sure that we aggro the mobs that are here because once we drop down from here, we're going to drop down to the hut. And all these mobs are going to run all the way back. And anything you didn't aggro is going to be aggroed all the way down, 
all the way back through the wall, all the way through the back. And so that's why this kite, <clears throat> these kites can kind of take a while to gather the mobs because they are running a pretty long distance um, to get to uh, where we are down here. So again, uh, back to this map, we're going to hit the little little pillars that will be here or the one that's right up on the wall. Just hit those and then levitate over. Um, if you don't make it, don't worry. Keep what you got and just go down to the hut and just kite as normal. There's only like a few more mobs. Maybe like six more mobs up here. Um, that's all we're doing is just trying to maximize those mobs. So not a big deal if you miss it. I've done it. I've missed it. I'm guilty of everything <laughs> that could go wrong already. I've I've, I've done it in, somehow. I don't know. And there's still more that I'm probably going to get wrong later on, later on as well. So that's pretty much it and that is how we are going to pull so once everything is clear uh, we'll get those kites on the road again you don't need to pull the entire thing at once especially at lower levels because you're just going to get wrecked with hits these guys hit in the hundreds so just be very very careful uh, again you could pull the mode all the golems out here down below or even the temple too uh, to do that uh, one mob of note that i almost forgot uh, there is a mob that can cast and he can root you, and that is the human skeleton. Uh, right now he is up in the back, and actually let's see if we can just see him real quick. Just so you can get a visual. Um, wait for this skeleton here to path. Because he is up and in there. So uh, they are all in different... So let's just make sure. Cool. Uh, the golem isn't going in. But um, right here, the... Oh, never mind. He's not up. He was up, so someone killed him. Easy day. Uh, you can see people down here fighting at the temple now, just as a reference. But there is a human skeleton. He looks like a normal skeleton, not one of these like Sarnak-looking skeletons. And uh, again, he can cast. So if you see him, uh, try to... You can zone him out. Just note where he is. Uh, I wouldn't really risk it uh, trying to kill him. You can kill him one on one first and then, you know, pull everything or however you want to do it. So that is the only mob and will and that uh, I know for sure can cast and not only cast, but can reach you and that is no bueno. So, all right, we'll get into the kiting. All right, the area is clear for this kite. Let's refresh, levitate real quick. Also take the opportunity to set up your hotkeys. I've done it where I've gotten the whole kite and I didn't have these set up correctly uh, as I use them, but uh, just having them in order and whatnot. But um, okay, here we go. We're going to do the normal pull around, uh, making sure also that your drum is on. And we are off. So we'll start through the door. They're already aggroed. I'm just going to give it a sit. There we go. Get some extra aggroed mobs into there. Already open. Oop, lost my cellos. Get that back on. Make sure we get all this. So right into this wall. Mind the gap. Up to where the goos are. Just right on around. Uh, trying not to get stunned. We want that cello is on. We're looking for this little node here. Get this up and over. And we're just running right over. Uh, get the wraith here. There we go. And we're coming down. So we're going to go right down here to the huts. And right now I'm going to go over to what I called hut one. And we're going to wait. Um, and this is from Mine Arts video where. Um, as soon as we see them coming, because we want to pull all the aggro, all the mobs on this side. We actually got some pathers here. I'm not sure where they're from. But as soon as we see them, then we're going to beeline it back over to this hut area to get the other side pulled as well. So just kind of sitting, having heal song going. Um, I will equip my loot now so I don't forget. Kind of twist in cellos, actually. Let's keep the drum on for now. Um, what we're going to do is use the mechanics of this house to um, gather and bunch the mobs. So a pretty cool technique, again, from Mine Arts video. 
that I saw so we don't have to do a whole lot of work. Uh, the main thing right now is not, there we go, the mobs are there. So run right over to this side. Um, we don't have to do a whole lot of work. We don't have to, the main thing is staying on top of this hut and getting the mobs over. So I'm going to come on this side over here. You'll see the mobs are starting to path onto this side. So we're going to use the center line of this hut to control the mobs. And as you see, as I go back and forth, um, the mobs are kind of going to and fro. So other mobs are coming out here now. Um, and what you can do is utilize the path of this mob here running back and forth to help gather the mobs. So they're on these weird like little, uh, I don't know what to call it. The, the pathing is just unique here. If you stay in one spot for too long, they will aggro and bunch up. So uh, if you pull them down and you come back over, you can actually split the pack so I can run up again and kind of gather the mobs that way. So a little bit of finesse here. It's kind of interesting to explain, but uh, you can see how I can control them. I'm just taking a little bit longer now just to show you this. More mobs are coming because they're coming all the way through the back of the zone. And there's the Black Reaver. Uh, we're not going to be able to kill him, so we're going to have to eventually zone him out. But regardless, um, once we get you know them mostly grouped up, we'll give it here just another few seconds just in case. But now we can run up and down the house here to really bunch them up using the pathing mechanics here. Um, you can go back and forth continuously too uh, by splitting the pack and bunching them up that way. But whichever way you want to do is fine. I mean, that is why we're doing it. And as you can see, taking no damage here and uh, just getting them nice and grouped. I think that is about it for gathering them up. My loot is on. That'll be my primary on, you know, on Lethen here as I'm using all stringed instruments. So again, we're going to use both methods of kiting and uh, and we'll bring it in into the area here. So they're nice and grouped. We'll just come right in here into the middle, give it some distance. Um, again, I am going to look up and then scroll out as that will help me. Um, that's about it. Everything else is set up, and this will be the normal, my normal method of kiting. So engaging my auto run, auto strafe, clicking off the screen, and releasing my forward and strafe key to lock it in. So I am using mouse steering, um, and we'll start bringing it in. Nice spiral in, nice and slow. Right now, cellos is is on, so that'll fade off here in a second, and we will. Um, Bring these in a little bit tighter. There we go. Cellos is off, so it's a little bit more controllable. And dots are landing. So this is pretty cool. Um, you have this whole area to, to work with um, to kind of just get used to cutting right there in the middle, give you enough leeway on all your sides. If you feel like you're getting, you know, spiraling outward too close to the wall, again, just reposition. So say I'm over here and I'm hitting the wall or something like that, you know, just kind of drag them out to the middle. Just give it, you know, a, a potato or so, a second, and bring them right back in. So we'll do this here just for a moment. Okay, I'm, you can skip up. I'm going to put the timestamp of strafe kiting. So this is it here of just norm of how my normal way of doing it, of just doing a nice tight circle um, with mouse steering. Uh, you can tab through your targets to see the, you know, the life of them. Um, you have definitely have more than 25. So uh, we will cycle to where, yeah, they're at 60. Six on that one. But again, none of these mobs, as you can see, cast. So this is pretty, pretty nice. And I, and of course, it's ideal for what we're doing. So also, um, as soon as some of these die, then we'll get into the strafing method of doing this. Uh, the area is around the temple is should still be clear, I hope. But I only need to do one pass just to show you guys the method, anyways. So just give it a second. And just being careful of the trees, not to say that you get stuck in them all the time, but there is the possibility 
It has. I felt like it happened to me once, um, and that got me killed because it's just a moment. You are very close in here, so anything to stop you uh, will get you whacked. And these mobs, even at level 60, they it's just the instant kill. <laughs> they instantly kill me, that is, and uh, they hurt. So just kind of showing as soon as we get one dead uh, how fast it can go. Again, this is all four songs at level 60. I'm going to do this again on my 49 bard McTwisty for more practicality um, and all that. So this first pack, the first 25 should almost be dead. Um, I am not going to instrument swap, even uh, even though I have you know some other modifiers. I'm not instrument swapping. There's a lot going on here. Uh, normally I would if I had just a tiny bit more distance, maybe, or more area to work with. But um, even while strafing, you got a lot of clicking and a lot of things to be mindful of. Uh, not to hit walls and get stuck and all of that. So, okay, let's get into the actual strafe kiting. So, real quick, I like to go, you know, count, uh, counterclockwise. That's just personal preference. You can do it, again, however, which way you want. And... Uh, Right now, I'm still in the auto run, auto strafe, and I'm going to click off Spirit of the Wolf, and we're going to strafe around, right? Watch out for these pillars, and there is nothing here. You can do like a little wiggle movement to start bringing those mobs in. Make sure that you are scrolled all the way out. There we are. And there we go. We get dots landing once we have a good area. So there is the other mob. That's the mob to watch out for. Um, in case he stuns you, that would have been a very bad moment. Um, to have happened to us. So this takes a little bit of finesse. Some people like to do this method a lot more than the others. Um, another good reason to have levitate here, and um, it was also mentioned in some uh, Thing Mine Arts video as well, is turn off auto duck, auto ducking. Uh, there's an area here where it will cause you to do that. I think it's in this area here, and uh, um, that could result in a bad day because auto duck you cannot you're not running and you're definitely not strafing, so you need to uh, recalibrate um, to get you know get that off and uh, get dots back on. So this is, takes a little bit more finesse as you can kind of wiggle there to lose the strafe portion of the run, which slows you down momentarily to bring these mobs in. So that's what that's what the the whole wiggling is about. And because we have these straightaways, that's how we kind of have to do it. Uh, again, you can hide all the corpses. Definitely want that because you're doing a lot of short clicking. Um, so you don't want to be looting while doing this either. But all right. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to get Spear of the Wolf back on and then we'll continue. I'm just going to continue my normal kiting routine over here. And then we will be on our way. Just going to stop it here for a moment, get them in the center, re-engage my strafe. Go back to auto run, auto strafe, and we are back in the fight. So again, using tab, you can cycle through the mobs here. Uh, the last one will be the reaver, so I'm just going to kite this down to him and show you just what, just you know, get him enough distance to be able to to run out of here uh, safely without training anybody. I saw that the moat came back, you know, was back open, so no one should be there besides over in the stables right now, as far as I know. But that is the gist of it. So pretty cool tactics, pretty cool uh, mechanics there to get the mobs bunched up. You don't have to run around in a circle now. If you did lose levitate for whatever reason, or you missed, you know, the house. You may have enough time just to levitate quickly and get back up on top of the hut. You can do either side, right? It doesn't really matter, but it's to, to maximize the number of mobs is why we're moving from hut to hut. So, uh, pretty cool there. So you can speed up through this just to get everything else done. Uh, I believe I started at 78-ish percent. I don't even remember. <laughs> but 
but from other kites I've gotten up 9%, uh, 7%, you know, I said average 8% here. I lost levitate, but that's okay. I'm just being going to be more mindful of not hitting any of the foliage here in the area. I will hide corpses again. Uh, to hide corpses, remember slash hide corpse space all. Uh, I just have a macro there on my number zero key. So still plenty of mobs left, right? We're killing a ton of them. And pretty awesome experience at level 60 just to fill your EXP bar back up. Um, And you can use your, you can kind of use your tracking, probably not, it's probably not going to work because there's a ton of mobs all over the place. Remember that this is like a tight box zone. It's really not that big at all. So uh, tracking really isn't really going to be useful to have up to, to, to like mob count or something like that. So cool, nice ring of corpses. By the time we're done, some of these are going to rot, so... And people, you know, it is going to be fair game for loot and all that. So, I mean, can't expect too much. <laughs> but the gems are really nice. You know, some of the sapphires and whatnot, you know, sell for 98 or so plat. Um, so you can make quite a bit of change. Sometimes you get nothing, you know, from one pull. Sometimes you get a ton of gems. So those are what you're really looking out for. Uh, maybe an occasional spell or two. And some other items. There's some like uh, wizard staffs and stuff that I've gotten before. So pretty cool on the loot. You know, nothing crazy. But uh, it's definitely worth it if you can get uh, the kite going and get these mobs down. All right, the initial pack is almost down. So there we go. I think all we have is up. Oh, I think there's a wraith still. 11%. There we go. Cook him real quick. He should be the last one that I can see. So cool, both methods there. Uh, we will zone this guy out. Oh, there we go, got hit finally. <laughs> Rookie, Rookie move. Um, all right, he is going down. I'm gonna run out to the back here um, just to get some, some good distance. We'll get Cellos back on. Actually, let's get the drum on. Here comes the Reaver. Uh, all this area, uh, I didn't sit, so they're probably too low to have aggroed before. Not a big deal. But here comes the Reaver, and we'll just put on Cello Song of Travel now. You don't have Cello Song of Travel, not a big deal. That's just something extra. So we'll just go right on out as quickly as possible. We just don't want to train anybody. But there we go. And that is that. So we'll come back and hit it on the 49 bar McTwisty. Alrighty, we're back on uh, McTwisty here. I'm on McTwist. Um, so right now, a quick song lineup, pretty much uh, same songs minus the you know Denon's Bevirement. So we got you know sub to Discord, Chords of Dissonance, uh, Chords of Cessation, and I'll be twisting in cellos. On this character, I do not have J Boots or 
you know, uh, Spear of the Wolf pots or anything like that. So it might be more advantageous to get, you know, those pots because that Spear of the Wolf uh, is going to help you greatly. I'm actually kind of rechecking my bags to see if I have any last minute ones, but I don't. Uh, Gear-wise, this is all basic. Everything here is basically classic. Uh, maybe except for, like, the Lambent, which came out later in classic, but everything else is your typical gear. Bloodstain, or a giant scout mantle. I don't know what that is. Um, 10 hit points, whatever. I don't even have a waste item, so uh, all normal instruments, hand drum, loot, all that. I don't think I'm going to try instrument swapping either on this. I mean, I guess we could, but that's going to be a lot of clicking, and I don't think we want that. Mask of Deception is also good, but um, there we go. So on this character, I have my Singing Steel Boots at level 45, and as previously mentioned, uh, this is a little bit shorter duration than regular Pegasus Cloak or other Levitate. Um, and so we'll keep that on and uh, that's at level 45 when you can use that clicky effect so um, during Kunark release remember that the uh, effect on that is not levitate so not until a little bit later does this change to Aglamente's Aria of Eagles so cool so let's try to get this kite on the road so with this guy if I take too much damage I'm simply going to stop where I am and just come down and gather those mobs for that kite. I'm not going to continue to run and get pummeled by mobs. This guy has a lot less AC and all that kind of stuff, so uh, just being careful there. Uh, if it works out to where I don't get hit as much, then obviously I'm going to kite the whole thing. If I need to break it up, I can do that as well. So I can kite, or I can pull just the top half um, and try to pull through here, just run out of the, the door here and, and over um, to the hut. That's one way to do it. Um, and then just kite the top portion next. Uh, so again, that's if you're taking too many hits and you just can't uh, get it. So you don't want to drop all the way down. I mean, you can, uh, but you just realize now you have to gather mobs that way. So you might have enough time to get that you know, have that levitate on, get over and levitate back up. But uh, that will be the goal. So um, Actually, one more time, because it is a shorter duration, I want to have that levitate on as long as possible. And actually, I'll just leave those boots on so I have them. All right, Cellos is going to be paramount here. Uh, there's another mob running in. So let's see what we can do. You can kind of strafe down the halls here. Get ready to click. Uh, so this came off. It's all right. Up the goo ramp. So actually, we're doing very well on hit points now. There's has been times where I was just getting hit way too much. And that really stopped me. So strafing all through here. Get up on that node if you can. Hey, okay, Cellos didn't come off for a moment. That's all right. We'll kind of just fly over. Make sure we got them and we're coming down. So same method. We're going to go over here to hut one. Half life on that. That's okay. Let's get a little bit of healing going just in case. So again, we're going to wait. I'm not going to switch out my drum just yet, or switch out to my loot. I'm going to wait for those mobs to come back down. I can give it a sit, I guess. We'll figure it out here in a moment. I get tracking off. I'm not too worried about it. Let's get Cellos on and ready. I'm actually going to refresh Levitate as well. Sell those back. And right now I'm at 0%, so we'll see. So there's mobs. Cool, that means that that side is pulled and good. So let's move back over to hut 2. And we'll do the same method here of gathering the mobs. So I'm going to sit here on the right side, you know, facing this way. And uh, wait for these mobs. The path, and we'll give it, you know few minutes here I 
There we go. Just kind of running back and forth here. Start gathering up these mobs as they come. Just run along the side, keeping on the uh, side here of the hut, not crossing that center line. As you see, they're already gathered up pretty darn nicely. Still more mobs coming. I just saw some more that are running down. Let's kind of pull them all here so that they can gather. So this will be a uh, longer kiting um, because I don't have uh, the higher loot mods and all that kind of stuff. And I'm only using certain songs. And I'm prioritizing cellos because I just don't want to slow down. Um, I can kite all day long or at least run in circles all day long, <laughs> you know. But uh, we'll see how many get resistant and whatnot. If we, uh, if you're a little bit lower level doing this and you're getting too many resists, then you're just gonna ha you're gonna have to zone them out. So hopefully the back will be empty uh, because of this, and uh, um, we can just kind of run around and leave them in the back there and, and kind of beeline it out. So uh, we got those nice and gathered. So let's go ahead and bring them in. So let's switch out to the loot. Uh, everything is set up. I have dot dot. Um, actually, I'm going to do loot there. And then uh, I'm going to look up, scroll out, keep that levitate on, engage my auto run, auto strafe. I'm tabbing the target, and we will just bring it on in. Yeah, I lost my cellos there for a moment. I actually just had a little a heart skip the beat. <laughs> Keep cellos on. There we go. Alrighty. Um, I got full up on hard drive space, so I stopped recording the initial, the halfway through this kite. I just had the reaver left and check this out. I am level 50 and 28% into level 50. Off of that one pole. Same pole I did with uh, Lethen where I got like, what, 7% or so. And uh, I just went through an entire level from 0% of 49. This is still the same kite. I still have the Reaver on me. I did get hit near the end. I was kind of typing. I wanted to get, um, I was typing, chatting with uh, someone else and uh, trying to hide corpses. I didn't have the macro made on this character. So that's another tidbit. <laughs> Make your macros. And I had the Reaver on here. So this is pretty awesome. I did not expect to get that much experience at this level. This is the first time I've ever kited uh, this zone on McTwist. So that was level 49. So obviously if I pull this, you know, again, I don't know at what level it stops slowing down. But that is pretty darn awesome. And that set me up for my next video, actually, um, down in Kedge Keep. So uh, that is pretty much it. I'm going to run this guy out the same way. Um, try not to get hit. Because uh, I'm low life now, so I, I'm not going to really risk too much more about zoning out. Uh, but that is the zone. Actually, there is another mob in there. Whoop. Keep on going. But that is it, right? That is uh, twisting uh, level 49 and all throughout. So you know, leave comments, leave suggestions. If you know some cool tricks and tips that you want to share, hey, by all means, cool stuff. Hit me, hit me up in game. Always... Uh, would love to talk about bard uh, specific stuff and eh, or anything for that matter but uh that's pretty much it uh, i'm just gonna bring on this last one and uh you guys keep on rocking up oh, here and now i'm gonna die <laughs> cellos man right at the last p point <laughs> right at the last part <laughs> but all right that is it we'll see you guys next time